How many people here know somebody who's ADHD? I have several in my family. I know them well. Um, it's mostly an organic problem, and it tends to run in families, and is characterized by the ability, inability to sustain focused attention. And some of the symptoms that you recognize right off is distractibility, inattention, free flight of ideas. Michael calls those rabbit trails where you have an idea and all of a sudden you're going off a different way. He tells me that a lot. Stay on task, Jim. Um, impulsivity, hyperactivity, those are symptoms. And I, as I was studying about reading God's word and hearing God today, this week, I was thinking that sometimes we, we have ADHD when we're doing that because we get so easily distracted. You know, we'll, we'll get, start to pray and we'll, we'll be in the midst of a prayer and then our brain will just go somewhere else. Or we'll be reading the scripture and, and we'll see a word that just sends us down a different rabbit trail and we're unable to stay focused and to realize what we're reading and what God is saying to it. And so we don't hear from God as clearly as we might if we could stay focused. Um, and distractions, I don't know about you, but the internet, the cell phone, Facebook, all of those things are distractions. We are TV, stereos, um, you know, everything distracts us these days, and, and we're inundated with distractions, Senate hearings and, you know, talk radio, on and on and on. But the main reason that I see that we can't really study the Word of God and know what he's saying to us is our inability to focus on it. And I don't mean to sit down and read it cover to cover, and read every word and take it all in. I mean to get the message that God is giving to us from what we're reading. And so, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is that we need to focus on what God's saying and we need to try to keep our minds a channel so we can receive from him I love Psalm 123, 1 through 2 in the Message Bible. I'll read it to you. It says, I look to you, heaven-dwelling God, look up to you for help, like servants alert to their master's commands, like a maiden attending her lady. We're watching and waiting and holding our breath, awaiting your word of mercy. How many times have we looked for an answer to some situation in our life? And we should be awaiting, watching, holding our breath, anxiously focused, waiting on what God is going to tell us. God speaks to us through the written word, through, his, through the Bible. And we're told by uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote in Timothy, that Scripture is God-breathed and inspired. It's useful for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. We've talked last week about the, whole, the scripture being inspired from the Holy Spirit. Every word that's written is truth through the inspiration of God as he gave it to the men that were writing it. If we don't have the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as we're reading it, however, it's just a collection of short stories. It's a history book, and it can be as dry as any history book. Interesting stories, interesting to know, what, to know what God did in those people's lives, but it doesn't really impact us unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. So many messages, so many stories, so many truths, so many things that we can see and identify with in the Scripture, but it really doesn't change our life until the Holy Spirit of God reveals it to us. My mother uh, used to read the Bible cover to cover every year, every year. Little bitty print, King James. I admired her for that. But when she did that, every time I would visit her, she would say, oh, I just learned this. And I would think, well, you read it last year and the year before and the year before. 
but the Holy Spirit would reveal a specific truth to her as she was reading it this time. And that's the way God works. He doesn't give us the whole load all at once. He just chooses bits and pieces for what we need in our lives at that given time. Dion Sanders, famous athlete, um, in an interview was quoted in Newsweek as saying that he read the Bible every single day. And that was imprinted on his life by his grandmother as a very young child. But what he said was, I read a scripture a day, but it was more like brushing my teeth. If you asked me five minutes later what I read and what it meant, I couldn't tell you. I did it out of repetition, but I didn't live it. We don't want to read the scripture out of repetition. We want to read it so that we can allow it to change our lives. If you're wrong, God will correct you. If you're right, he will tell you so. We, but he will not let us understand the word, the Bible, through our own intelligence. It comes from him. We can't know the truth just from study alone. We can't know the, the church. We can't know the truth if we just accept my interpretation, the church's interpretation. It comes from the Spirit of God. And we who have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior are born of the Spirit. So then the Spirit of God can speak to us and reveal truth. There's a, there's a minister very well known. Um, he does a lot of writing. And I check his writings frequently when I'm trying to understand a scripture or I'm trying to get an idea of something or even just an example of, of what the scripture is saying to put into a sermon. But what he said that I, to I totally disagreed with was, now that the Bible is written, God stops speaking through other means. I said, oh no, you have missed this. You have totally missed this. Um, and so he's entitled to be wrong once. It's okay. Um, I believe that God speaks to us through the written word because of revealing it to our spirit. I also believe that he speaks to us through our experiences. And I have a current one to share with you. I went to Home Depot to buy linoleum the other day. No, I went to Home Depot to look at linoleum. And I was... Um, I had looked online. I really didn't have time to go to all the stores, you know, that sell it. I just didn't know what I was going to do, and I, I was just kind of in a dither about it all. Didn't want to spend too much money. Didn't want to buy the wrong thing. So as I walked down the aisle where the linoleum was, all of a sudden the, the rollers came out so you could see everything on display, and there was a couple shopping. And um, I recognized them. And I know that they own a lot of property, and I know they are very prudent shoppers. And they were buying linoleum at Home Depot. And so I knew that was the best price and a good quality, and I didn't have to go shopping anymore. Now, I just thanked God for revealing that to me. Was it a great spiritual experience? Yes, because that's how I received it. But he also took all that worry off of me. I didn't have to go spend time going from store to store. I could just say, oh, thank you, and say hello to these people, and go on my way, and come back another day um, to, to buy linoleum. All the worry was gone, and I just thank God for doing that. I know that that was an experience where he spoke to me. It's very important that in our daily lives, we are looking for signs from him, that we are looking for words. We are looking for experiences where he reveals himself to us. Many, many times we've told this story in, in church, and I still love it. We read John 3.16 a lot, so I'm going to repeat this story. I think it's a parable. Not written in the Bible, but true. There was a big flood. A man's house was swept off its foundation, and he was clinging to the roof. And he was asking God, please, save me. And a speedboat came by. And the rescuer said, quick, 
get in the boat. We'll save you. He says, no, nope. I asked God to save me. I'm okay. And the speedboat took off. And the man said, God, please save me. Don't let me drown. And a helicopter came, and they dropped a rope down, and they said, wrap the rope around you. We'll save you from the flood. He said, nope, that's okay. God's going to take care of it. And pretty soon the house broke apart and the man died. He drowned. And when he got to heaven, he was really glad to be there. But he was pretty upset. And he says, Jesus, I asked you to save me. And you let me drown. And the Lord said, I sent a speedboat and I sent a helicopter. We have to be looking for the answer. We have to be looking for the messages that we get from Jesus. Many times, God is shouting to us in our own experiences. And we're intent on just one solution. So we're not seeing the other options that he's giving us. And, and it's not just church. It's not just praying. It's not reading the Bible. It's our daily life. He wants to be active in our daily lives. And we need to want him to be active in our daily lives and be looking for that activity. How many of our relationships would be improved if we stopped demanding that God change the other person? How much pain would we spare ourselves if we were willing to consider that our constant source of irritation might be a messenger from God sent to grab our attention? Remember the Apostle Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh that kept him humble and kept him seeking God for direction in his whole life? How much more quickly would we mature spiritually if we actually applied the Bible to our experience instead of saying, okay, this is religion, this is Christianity, this is church, this is real life? What if we integrated all of that into one? and let God speak to us. Are we struggling financially? Maybe God's trying to talk to us about the way we spend our money. If we're prospering, maybe it's God giving us blessings as a reward for doing things right. If we're prospering financially and we're not doing things right, God doesn't approve of that. He wants us to know what, what he's telling us through these messages. Understanding the right messages that God is sending us through our day-to-day -day experience requires discernment and prayer. He wants us to stay focused on him and what he wants to do. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, I want to read this. This is what Paul said about that thorn in the flesh that I mentioned. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations. Remember, he was the missionary pastor to the whole Gentile world. And churches, the Romans and the Corinthians and Galatians, Ephesians, all those people were coming to Christ because of his ministry. He could have become conceited. He could have thought, whoa, I am just really good. And so this is what he says, to keep me from being conceited because of these great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me that is why, for his sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. Opening our mind to the fact that God's sending us messages through our experiences causes us to rely on him and trust in him and to know that he knows what we're going through, that he cares about what we're going through. In Acts, um, Luke, who wrote Acts, said, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. 
God still speaks to us supernaturally. He still speaks to us in ways we don't expect. Sometimes we will hear a clear voice, and you'll look around and say, who said that? Or sometimes it will just be a knowledge in your brain that God wants you to do or know something specific. And that's really important to hear his voice in our inner person. I wonder if my um, pastor, who I read a lot, read that scripture. Because he's saying that I'll pour out my spirit on all people in the last days. Certainly these are last days. And he's talking about doing that in ways that will reveal Christ and bring people to Christ. And not just through reading the written word, but knowing Jesus as personal Savior. A lot of times we have difficulty hearing the voice of God, understanding exactly what he's saying. Jesus referred to those people as the proud ones, as the intelligent ones, as those who knew all the scroll and all the ro rules, and they were the leaders in the temple, and they had studied since childhood, and they knew everything, but they didn't receive Jesus as Messiah. They didn't see him as the one who was coming to shed his blood on the cross and take away their sins. They had a lot of knowledge, but they also had pride in that knowledge, and they, the pride blocked them from hearing what Jesus had to say. Paul says, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Love builds up, and that's what we need to allow to happen in our lives. The love of God that is given to us as his children that draws us to him so we have salvation and eternal life through him, that same love needs to be distributed to our world, to each person we come in contact with, our families and, <clears throat> and anyone, neighbors, even our enemies. We need to share that love of Christ. We need to pay attention to our experiences and ask God to help us to discern his voice in ordinary moments, like shopping for linoleum. And we need to be open to the blessing of a supernatural visitation where God just drops a word into our brain. However he chooses to do that, we need to be listening for it. Michael's going to come lead us in a song. I'll be somewhere listening. God is speaking. Are we listening? We need to.